Greetings and welcome to Black Talk Radio, where black radio stations matter. Today's discussion, we're going to be asking the question, how were programs like the Great Society and the Freeman's Bureau that were created to correct black problems that stem back to slavery? These programs are just two instances where solutions to black problems were distorted and resources were redirected to benefit other non-affected but more preferable groups. So in other words, the Great Society and the Freemen's Bureau, those were programs that were created specifically for black people to help black people get through the struggles after slavery where black people were set free with no money, no resources, no education or anything else. Black people were set free without any type of resources. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that's the question is how were programs like that, how were they distorted? to where the resources were directed or redirected to benefit other non-affected but more preferable groups. So moving on, the pattern and strategy of diversion have been used throughout the history of this country and are still effective today. It is important to recognize and understand these strategies and patterns. Examination of the life cycle of the Great Society program and the Freeman's Bureau show how well-intentioned programs to help blacks are diverted to help minorities or everyone. And see, that's a problem that we have to overcome is always referring to ourselves as people of color or minorities. We should be specifically talking about black people when we're speaking about our issues. We should be talking about black people. Far too long we've been speaking about people of color and minorities and what that's done is it, uh, it, it has allowed other people, other ethnic groups to come to America and to reap the benefits that rightfully should go to black Americans. And what's so cold about this is that these other groups of people that come to America and get these benefits, they then look down their nose at black people and say, how come you can't do any better? Not even realizing that this is a program, a system set up by design that puts black people in these type of conditions and so let's move on the great society president lyndon johnson's 1964 great society program as proposed was a comprehensive package of socio-economic programs and was created during the midst of the civil rights era in response to the misery and suffer johnson saw in black communities and requests from civil rights communities. The three billion dollar package deal that passed Congress, however, reflected the country's social construct on race and the benefits were soon spread broadly to everyone. Again, do you see the problem of referring to ourselves as minorities and people of color without speaking directly of black people we're in a very unique position the fact that we our ancestors endured slavery for 400 years for this country that allowed this country to be what she is today we are in a unique position where we should have been the beneficiaries of the resources that were rightfully due to black people. 
there were programs set up for these purposes and yet once again black people allow white supremacy because let's say it like it is allow white supremacy to once again fool them into diverting the resources to everyone instead of the people who rightfully it should have went to especially after slavery so let's move on oh well before I move on I want to take out a moment to say thank you to all of the people who subscribe to black talk radio at black junction TV I truly appreciate it for those of you who have already subscribed thank you anyways let's move on conservative political factions wanted to reduce public attention on racial conflicts and strategically promoted the great great society program as quote a war on poverty under funding the program and shifting focus to eradicate poverty among all population groups allow conservatives to give the pretense that the program would help blacks but the substance did not match the rhetoric when President Johnson announced his program he acknowledged the compromises he'd had to make when he said quote we have created new avenues of opportunities through jobs education and expanded access to health care for seniors, the poor, and Americans with disabilities. Unquote. Blacks received less than half of 1% of the $3 billion spent on the Great Society program. Blacks got the bill without the thrill of getting tangible benefits. So you see, the Great Society program contains social and educational components. But the centerpiece was economic opportunity and jobs in both rural and urban areas. In a program designed to correct racial inequalities, blacks should have received disproportionately higher assistance than whites. Whites received a disproportionately high share of the funds for economic opportunities such as business development and the majority of the administrative jobs created in the Great Society program. Poor white communities, especially in the Appalachian Mountains, received special targeted economic benefits. So you see, our government, because we live in a racist society, handpicked people with white skin and gave them economic benefits over black people and these are the same people who will point their fingers at you and say look at you what kind of condition you're in and this is the reason why I use words like arrogance but let's move on blacks needed economic and business development resources even more than social and education benefits those resources were not directed to them the lack of direct economic assistance and black business development was no accident of course not both the great society program and the freeman's banks were intended to address specific unique needs of blacks which resulted from centuries of slavery and Jim Crow segregation. Where, politi where politicians do have the courage to target a problem peculiar to blacks, there are so many others who work to ignore the problem or to only offer blacks symbolic benefits while the tangible unearned benefits go to groups other than blacks and see that's a problem and right there I'm gonna stop there 
on the Great Society program and now I'm going to shift to the Freeman's Banks. The pattern of diversion is similar for the Freeman's Bureau created at the end of the Civil War in 1865 and the Great Society program of the 1960s. Radical Republican Republicans deter, declared publicly that black ex-slaves could never be free men if they did not have an economic base and legal protection from their previous white owners. So the Freedmen's, the Freedmen's Bureau was therefore established to place newly freed slaves in a protected class and to give them the minimal amount of economic resources that they would need to live as free people which was 40 acres and a mule and $100. But true freedom and um, self-sufficiency was not to be. The black masses was never the black masses never received the promised economic stake because of opposition from anti-black southerners angry over losing the Civil War, their land, slaves, and their livelihoods, who convinced Congress to corrupt the intent of the program by including poor Southern whites as well as the old plantation owners as beneficiaries. The Freedmen's Bureau was initially charged with distributing the land captured during the Civil War to the slaves along with food, clothing, and a few dollars. The corruption of the Freedmen's Bureau redirected nearly all of the limited resources and land into the hands of the same plantation owners from whom the Union had taken it. The plantation owners, citizens, and Confederate soldiers received nearly all of the Freedmen's Bureau's money, clothing, and food that was intended to provide black ex-slaves an initial economic stake. Do you hear and understand what I am saying to you? That all of the resources that they were intended to give to black slaves, to the ex-black slaves, they instead gave to the plantation owners and to the Confederate soldiers and not anything to black people. These are the same arrogant people who ask you today to look at the condition you're in. With the Bureau's funds and resources redirected, the former slaves were forced to survive with no land, food, weapons, tools, animals, education, culture, or institutions. Southern whites depleted the resources of the Freedmen's Bureau. Then to add insult to injury, the South was then allowed to implement the black codes that mandated, among other things, that ex-slaves must be in possession of a signed job contract at all times or be incarcerated. You see, they've always had a plan to cage black people one way or another. This created the free or cheap labor supply southern whites needed and the former slaves were often forced to return to work for their old masters or risk being jailed as vagrants. Some blacks were denied education and could not read. They could not consummate contracts in their own behalf. This fact alone produced the free or cheap black labor supply that whites needed as domestic service and on the old farms and justified blacks being sent to prison, farms, and road gangs, which were the approved vehicles through which whites acquired free black labor. That is the end of this particular segment. The, resource, the source of this segment here was taken from Dr. Claude Anderson. The book's title is called A Black History Reader, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask. Again, that's by Dr. Claude Anderson. So, 
With that said, I'm going to take us back to the original question. How were programs like the Great Society and the Freedmen's Bureau that were created to correct black problems that stem back to slavery, how were two programs like that were distorted and the resources redirected to benefit other non-affected but more preferable groups. How is it that we allowed that to happen? We need to come to those kind of answers so that we make sure that we never repeat this again, especially for our youth coming up. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Black Talk Radio, where black radio stations matter. Peace out.